Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking with Jennifer Ray. She is a brand strategist, business coach out of Buffalo, New York. We are talking about spirituality, business, and also her sobriety journey and how she has come a long way in healing herself. Let's begin. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm excited to dive into how spirituality has supported you, your life, and your business. Thank so you. tell us a little bit about, you know, where you came from and, and how things were prior to spirituality. So it's been, I've always been into spirituality. And I think in the last, you know, two years, it's really been the focus. I've really honed in on utilizing it in order to better things within life and business. And I think that it really comes into play when you are trying to work through trauma and trying to heal yourself. And I started utilizing the law of attraction and manifestation and the secret. And I was realizing that there was so much more deeper stuff that I was trying to cover off by utilizing that. Like it was almost toxic positivity, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I really had to go deeper and work through the traumas and spirituality and meditation mindset and being able to unpack all of those things that were affecting me has been life-saving. So you mentioned toxic positivity. That's a new term. Yes. We got to dive into that term. What, is, okay. what does that mean? So I kind of view it as when somebody is going through a hard time or when, I mean, if you look at TikTok or a lot of coaches or spiritual people, they talk about the law of attraction, which I firmly believe in it. I think that our mindset, you know, our thoughts create things and our mindset really is probably the number one thing to be successful or to grow or to evolve in life. But there comes a point where when you're pushing those things and you're pushing the positivity, you know, like affirmations, they say make affirmations and your, your mind doesn't know the difference. But I think it's so much deeper, like what happened in our lives that causes us to not be able to be positive. And we can utilize those things, the affirmations or manifesting, and we can use it to distract us from doing the deeper healing work. Instead of working through those traumas, it's almost like with alcohol or drugs, we numb that stuff in order to, to not want to deal with the deeper healing, messy things. Instead of the law of attraction and manifestation really kind of healing, it's more, you're, you're saying it's more of a mask. Or like a cover up for now kind of thing. Yeah, if it's used in excess for sure, I think it can be very toxic and it can be very, it can, it can lead us away in a way that it just distracts you from the deeper stuff. And nobody wants to deal with that stuff. We don't want to sit in our, our feelings, <laughs> not comfortable. So the law of attraction, I think, can really be a tool to distract you from really focusing on those deeper things. So it's more about looking at the root and issue first. Yeah, definitely. What was your journey in doing that? The rooted issue, like healing that part? No, I think we're always going to be on this journey. I don't think there's one thing that mm -hmm. I can say triggered, you know, this, the, the healing. I think we're always going to be doing that. And they say new levels, new devils. I think every time we evolve and grow, something new comes into it. Um, so I don't really know if it was one thing I would say most recently having COVID and quitting alcohol. I'm like three months now with no alcohol. That has been probably the biggest thing. I am so excited to even be able to witness yeah. and share this with the audience that you yeah. are three months into the year. So all year yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, you are in this new phase or new phase of your, even your physical body, right? Isn't it like a transformation physically as well? Absolutely. Yep. What kind of transformation in, inside has happened with that? Oh, I think it was, I think I was using alcohol as like a false confidence. Like I used it in business settings and it wasn't that I was like drinking every day, all day, or I like needed it. But when I did drink, I didn't know when to stop or when to turn it off. 
Uh -huh. I think that happy hour was happy hours and I couldn't, I wasn't one to just go for like one or two, uh -huh. but I would, I was getting really sick before I had COVID. So this was in December, the last couple of times I drank, I was, I didn't like how I felt. I didn't uh -huh. like, I was like feeling out of control and it wasn't even a lot, uh -huh. but when I had COVID, I didn't drink for those three weeks and I just kind of stayed the course, but I find that I have more energy in my business. I, I was waking up with super bad anxiety in the mornings and that I call it anxiety where you're just like, what did I say? What did I do? Um, oh, and yeah. physically, I mean, weight started coming off very easily, probably because when you stop drinking, you don't eat like the crappy foods or, you know, yeah. just totally that. So it's been, a comp I guess, I utilized it for false sense of confidence, but I'm learning my own confidence sober. Mm. Kind of re but on the flip side, it's also been very triggering because I'm reliving all of these things that I chose to not deal with by drinking. Mm. Um, which I think it's like that for many people. We drink usually to escape. So it's refueling all of those things that I would normally be like, well, let me go have some wine or something. So it's been, it's been tough, but short-term pain for a long-term gain, I think. That's a hard journey to be on. Sucks. I mean, it, it does. Is. It is. Yeah. However, I want others to know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think it's also like, I want to be held accountable. Me telling my story gives other people hope but also if I do go slip up I know that it's not just answering to me I have to answer to other people and own it and I'm okay with that it happens like it might happen you know there's been times where I'm like I just want to have a bottle of wine like, <laughs> I don't want to deal with this anymore but it's just I, I need to tell the story because it keeps me held accountable Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What kind of spirituality things, practices do you do in your life to kind of keep you grounded? So I definitely, I try to meditate once or twice a day. Okay. Um, I try to limit my social media. I try to limit the news and um, mm -hmm. because that stuff can just take me like, I can spiral. I do Reiki. Okay. You do Reiki on yourself. I do, I do it on myself. And unfortunately I'm not as disciplined as I should be with all of these things. I mean, it's like sometimes, and I had this conversation earlier, like sometimes it takes everything to just get up and shower and go about the day. So it's like that finding that balance, but, um, I definitely am learning to give myself some grace and just be when my body says like rest and take time I do it because I'm not trying to set myself back reading I started reading I walk I try to walk every day um what are you I, reading right now uh Gabby Bernstein happy days this is signed I went live with her on Instagram she added me into her live and sent me this yeah. what's the book about so she ends up getting very vulnerable and talks about her traumas and her past is very similar to mine. And she talks about how she went um, alcohol free and drug free and talks about some things that happened to her when she was younger. And just it's really, it's really, really solid. Good book. I highly recommend it. It can trigger. It can yeah. definitely, definitely very deep. So if somebody's not ready to really hone in and like do the work, I would hold off. But it's very good. What type of meditation do you do? Because I usually do a guided meditation. Gabby Bernstein has a couple. Um, okay. If I don't get it in during the day, I will put like a one on YouTube because the subconscious picks it up anyway. Yeah. And um, I also, I consider like walking because I walk in like cemeteries and stuff. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Yeah, that's where I go because it's like quiet and peaceful. You, so you meditate, like you're kind of like in that connected place in the cemetery. Is that why you consider that meditation? So it's like movement meditation where okay. when you're walking and stuff. Cause I have a really hard time like shutting my brain off. Sometimes I'll get into a meditation and like five minutes and be like, okay, I'm done. Like I can't. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. So um, even cleaning can be considered movement meditation like think about it when you're cleaning and you're in that zone that's when you're connected 
So yeah. I think we have to start viewing meditation a little, not so much like sitting and in being in silence, whatever works for your mind. Cause it doesn't always work for everybody that way. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, I don't teach the quiet monk style on yeah. a mountain. Do you think you have angels and guides that you kind of experience or feel around you? Absolutely. I think that's with anything though. Um, actually it's funny, you know, the day that we spoke and I was telling you about the business name and about my great grandma and stuff. Do you know that not even two hours later, did I get an email from somebody that was inquiring on my website? And it was like, Angelina has booked a call with you. <gasps> it was like within an hour of us getting off the thing. Remember I showed you the picture of her and then I was like telling you about her. Yeah. And that, that was her name. And I was like, okay, those are the signs. And I think that when we are open to receiving them, we get them. Um, but I think a lot of people get weirded out by that. And yeah don't want to face that but it's it's true I mean they're there they're there to help yeah. so do you think your grandmother is like a an angel of yours kind of just supporting you in the unseen world for sure I think all of our family is and I think that we just if we connect with it and we're able to be open to it I think that's the biggest thing just just thinking that it could be a possibility is enough to to get the signs and, and to see that we're on the right track do you think about tarot cards? I do them. Do you? Oh, I didn't I even know that. that. What yeah. is your card, the cards that you use? These are the ones that I use like regularly. And then I have a bunch of different Oracle cards. I think it depends on the vibe and what the person is wondering or where they're at. What I feel called to is what I would use. So do you do them by yourself for you? Like when you're alone and you kind of feel like you need some answers? Yeah, um, I, I don't really, I try not to use them as like a clutch or like a crutch. Is it clutch or crutch? I don't know which one. Crutch, yeah, like a, crutch, yeah. kind of like a support or like, okay. what is it where you depend on it? Kind yeah, of crutch, yeah, I try not to use them as a crutch. We can because call it I, crotch. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to use it as a crutch, but. Um, <laughs> so I do sometimes if I feel it, but I don't really do it a lot on myself. No. Oh, okay. Okay. You do them for your clients. I do sometimes, or if a friend like it comes to me, a lot of my friends, it's funny because I've been doing them for like 10 years and a lot of people like, Ooh, I can't believe you do tarot cards. Now all those people that are like, Ooh, I can't believe you do it. Are like, can you do my reading for me? I'm like, sure. <laughs> no way. 10 years. Mm -hmm. I started when I was like, I was probably, no, well, no, I got my first deck when I was maybe 17 and I'm 33. So over. So, okay, rewind. So at 17, like in high school, you were called to do this work. Absolutely. Yep. And, uh, well, I mean, like, were you just like, uh, oh my God, do you remember the movie, The Craft? No. No? Oh, girl. It's like a bunch of kids in high school. I was in the okay. 90s. So I was a young girl. They were doing witchcraft. Okay. It's called The Craft. You got to check it out. I'm writing it down. So I don't the Craft. It. They were doing witchcraft. They were like doing, you know, they were summoning the North, the West, the South, the East, all the stuff and doing yeah. crazy shit, crazy shit. And, yeah. and that's when I was like, huh, could I be <laughs> doing that? Like I literally at like 12 and that's why I asked you when you were 17, did you watch yeah. that? And maybe that was what it evoked that. So how did you even, it's how did you even then, I guess when I was a teenager, I was always like a hippie. I was always like very free spirited. And I, I don't really know. I've always been very intuitive, even when I was little. I mean, like young, young. And I got the first deck, but I also was not very like, I wasn't doing it regularly, but I was comfortable with it. Um, I would say in the last, I don't know, five to six years is when I really like got this deck that I, I have now and did a nosedive into understanding the cards and the meanings and stuff. Um, but yeah, I've always been drawn to that stuff. So when you say as a child, you've always been intuitive, what do you mean by that? Dreams, I would have dreams that would come true. Um, I just, I always had that, that want and that need to heal people. You would see visions. Yeah. And my dreams have been getting like really intense lately. Like I'll dream stuff. I've had dreams where mom, friends or family are like pregnant 
and they don't even know it. And then they find out like a couple of weeks later, um, that's happened like several times and they'll have like off the wall dreams. And I started keeping track of them now and like writing them down because they might not make sense in the moment, but something usually in the near future, like, oh, that's what that was about. Like I'm able to apply it. So it's kind of cool, but like creepy. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you astro project during sleep? I don't know. I do wonder what happens that we just lay there, but I, and I, I, oh, I'm open to the idea, but I've never really dived much into it to understand how it works. Mm, uh That's really interesting that you can see visions. And as a child, did you tell anybody about that when you were young? I don't think so. Really? I don't think so. Back to like, mental health and how we have these abilities as kids and we're like put into a we're go see a counselor like I think it's that fear and I think we're people are starting collectively to realize like everyone's a psychic everyone's a medium we all have an ability we're just told from a very young age if you see ghosts or you see whatever (laughs) you feel it like you're crazy you're you're crazy yeah they don't want to go into like a psych center for 72 hours because they feel something so we're taught very young to look outside of yourself for answers and don't trust your inner guidance and Mm, were you sensitive as well oh very like very very yes yeah so empathic and you probably didn't know what to do with that as a young child no and I think that's a huge thing too like with empathetic and stuff it's protecting your own energy I didn't know how to do those things I didn't know how to not take in other people's shit not realizing this is not mine to take on so that was something that was a big learning curve because it's easy when you're empathetic to to feel down but and not have any understanding why but it's because you're picking up other people's shit Uh uh and then you make it your own absolutely protection how do you do protection like you're protect protecting your energy what are the methods that you use well I think it's I mean I have crystals that I carry usually there's one in the bra during the day you Um, put it in your bra yeah yeah. which kind whatever I feel called to to bring for the day yeah usually Mm. in the shower the next day and it goes flying across the (laughs) bathroom that is too funny yeah And then there's visualization techniques. I mean, you can just ground yourself for five minutes before you go into a big crowded place or you're, you know, into like certain things, situations and just visualize like a white light protecting you or a brick wall protecting you, just allowing because visualization is such a powerful tool. About the intention and how much you believe in it. So whichever way works, you know, do it. Yep. Um, when you get on calls like this, do you do a protection meditation? I usually sage and light a candle and I do do like a five minute meditation before I get on. Yeah, cool. I had done, um, one, uh, it was like last summer and it was with a man and man, after that, I had the biggest headache Oh yeah. <laughs> and I didn't do a protection thing. I just, you know, jumped on and we did a talk and all day it was like whatever thing was lingering came and gave me a headache so I think protecting yourself um is important do you still get dreams now like now that you're sober like how is it now that you're not drinking for the past three months how more connected intuitive have you become Um, I think it's like a mix. Like I feel that the dreams have been intense. I'm able to remember them more. I'm feeling more grounded Mm -hmm. at the same time. It comes at the cost of still healing and going through the trauma and actually having to sit in it and feel it to release it. So it's kind of like, it's kind of right now I feel I feel kind of disconnected. Like, I feel like it takes more effort for me to feel grounded and connected because the shit I'm feeling is so heavy. But I feel Mm -hmm. like once this initial, whatever, you know, all the first, all the first things you have to do sober or whatever, I think it will get much easier. Yeah. Oh, it will. Like, you're just, it's like, um, you're building resilience right now to your emotions. Really good book. Um, it's called emotional agility. Okay. By, by Susan, Susan something. I don't know her last name. I just remember seeing Susan and it's called emotional agility. And how, well, she says that it's a, we're in a boat, right? In a boat. 
and we are the boat and however way we sail the boat which is our emotions causes us to either be meet our success faster or not anyway it's great i uh, just thought about that as we're talking about emotions i mean i call myself a light witch people yeah. might feel weird about that um, but I think, you know, when you're in spirituality, you kind of have done this kind of stuff in the past in your past yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. Have you done a past life reading in the past, like before ever? No. And I want, I, that's funny because I've been wanting to, but I have not found somebody that I felt like called to do it with. My experience on that was when she says like your past life immediately your soul goes back at that moment and you can feel it like and then it makes sense the way the reason why you feel all the things today right because you're hundreds of years ago you experienced and that's the origination okay like it's, it is very um it's powerful it just makes you feel like oh okay it makes sense. Like it all connects. Have you ever it all heard connects. Of life contracts? Have you ever heard of that? What is it called? Life contracts. The concept that we come to earth with a life contract and we have deadlines and things like with reincarnation, basically. Is that like um, Akashic Records? I kind of, I would, I don't know too much about that, but it seems like the same kind of concept that you basically come uh, to the world with a life contract and you have deadlines to finish things and viewing life kind of as like a school. And when you don't learn those lessons, they come in a different way and you have deadlines to, to learn them before, you know, certain things happen, but it kind of goes hand in hand with the, um, reincarnation and, and bringing karma in from other past lives into this. Yeah. So, that tells with the life contract that tells me um that we are not kind of like free souls mm -hmm. but then in the same breath if we are reliving you know to heal five mm -hmm. lives ago that means we're also yeah. not free souls as well well we have free will though still and mm. all of it but the the concept being that we we know what we're coming to earth to do like we sign on for these things and you still have the the, the free will but i mean yeah in a way kind of not free souls but saying that we basically know what we're getting into when we do it i don't know it's, a, it's an interesting concept it is the life contract and for some reason when i hear that it seems kind of scary like damn i got a due date <laughs> what's my due date <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, anything in, in spirituality can be scary, but like you had said earlier, it's all about perception. I mean, yeah. in the craft, that movie, we've been taught in all Disney movies, everything that witchcraft is demonic and it's negative and it's bad when really it's all about that person's intention. There's good and bad in everything. There's black and white in everything. It really boils down to what is that person trying to gain? Is it for help? helping humanity or is it for helping themselves and yeah. I think it's all about how you view it and how you how you want to see it is what it's going to be so tell us about your business and how did you get into that I was originally going to nursing school and I went through a bad breakup and I started in real estate which led to the branding and graphic design so I do brand strategizing graphic design and business coaching, certified spiritual coach. So I incorporate all of that into everything. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. And I was going to be a nurse and then it just kind of evolved and, and grow and grew. Um, so yeah, I think it, I started with social media and then um, I was realizing like our business is such a reflection on who we are and how we feel about ourselves. So that's kind of where the mindset became incorporated into everything. Spirituality is such an important, mm -hmm. it is such an important dynamic when you are dealing with business. Yeah. How do you see yourself when you are, you know, managing your clients and they're going through like, a, they're hitting a wall? What do you, what do you do in that moment? 
I think it's kind of just an intuitive thing. Um, utilizing the tools. I mean, I, I, th I think it really, I mean, we channel when we're meeting with clients. I think sometimes we're, we're channeling that message. Like, have you ever been on a meeting and then you don't remember like what you said to somebody and it's like completely gone, but you know, you sounded damn good and you helped them. That's channeling. I think when we allow ourselves to just surrender and allow whatever needs to be said to that person, it just kind of, just kind of comes out. Have you ever done wow. where you like don't remember what you said? Yeah, but you know, I've done so many things now that I make myself remember. I do notes, I do the call, I do, I record. Okay. I I will channel through that dashboard. Did we do the dashboard <laughs> together? I don't think so. It's like a white, it's a this white. I even have it up right now with our call, but no, I, I totally agree with that. It's like spirit is guiding you in the conversation to show up fully for the yeah, client absolutely and it's so it's not cookie cutter I mean everyone needs different things so you really have to be able to read into these people and see what they need and plan it accordingly because it's not going to be the same for everybody nowhere near the same yeah have you had a, a time where it was a difficult conversation however spirits guide light all of that the energy have but they they're like pushing you to have the difficult conversation have you had that i have and i kind of like what you said about the call with that man that you get off of it and you just feel completely drained but it's almost like i view it okay this person needs something that i have to say or needs to hear it like when you view it that you're kind of here to help people learn lessons and view it that way and flip it it's not as daunting if those conversations go south um but I think it's, I think it's, uh, goes back to just protecting your energy and not allowing those things to affect you because it's so easy. I mean, just like you said, you had a headache after you got off the phone with that guy. It's the same thing can happen with anybody that we talk to on the computer because they're projecting energy and things that we pick up on. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, there's moments where, you know, I have, I am called to go somewhere with a client and uh, I know that uh, it's going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. However, if I go against what I'm called to do, I feel like I'm not doing the job. Like I'm not doing what I meant to do. Right. Absolutely. And that goes back to, you know, like we can sit there and be positive and try to give them positive tools, but you're not benefiting people if you're sugarcoating shit and just like everything is rainbows and unicorns. It's not. We all have trauma. We all have trauma. That's one thing we can all collectively agree on. Regardless of the experiences and the levels are different, but every single human being has some form of trauma. And until we expose that and we start realizing that and breaking that stigma we're going in circles we're literally going in circles and grabbing at straws at anything that we can find to distract us I mean that's just I mean case in point the Will Smith Chris Rock thing whatever I mean the, everyone is consumed by it and not focusing on the shit that they should be focusing on because it's by design when we look internally and we view at ourselves and we work through our trauma and we work through those things, we're so powerful, but it's by design that we're distracted. So we don't realize our own power. Yeah. Distraction is, I think, the devil. Absolutely. So is fear. Yeah, absolutely. Fear, <laughs> distraction. Yeah. Best way to control people is through fear. And that is what, what is by design. Yeah. Well, shit. Well, shit. Well, shit. <laughs> <Just broke it. laughs> down. I loved our conversation today. Where can we find you? Where, what do we do to work with you? What are the things? So the website is um, www.theamorecompany.com. It's A-M-O-R-A-E. And then I have a business Instagram and a personal one. We follow each other, guys. It's under Amore. Uh, is it Amore Company? Yeah, Amore, Amore Company. For One of the best things about you, Jen, is that you are spiritual, just like a lot of the listeners here. And we love entrepreneurship. We, you're just the perfect person 
to be um, spending time with us today. So thank you so much for sharing with us all of the things, you know, including being vulnerable and sharing your sobriety journey. I know, I know a lot of people, especially being, you know, after coming out of COVID, we are going through a lot of new phases in our lives and um, to see and witness your growth is inspiring to me and a lot of the listeners. So we appreciate you. Thank you.